as you board, please move across your car to make room for everyone and kindly offer available seating to those needing special assistance. If you're standing, please hold on to the handrails and stay clear of the doors. They will be closing in a moment. Thank you. Welcome to another episode of Disney Assembled. I'm Troy. And I'm Mimi. And we are your happy little father-daughter podcast, here to create joy and share our love for all things Disney. Disney Assembled is sponsored by our patrons over on Patreon, Brenda, Danny, Connie, and Andrew. Yes, thank you guys so very much. We really, really, really appreciate your support. If you'd like to join them and get access to member-exclusive patron content, just head on over to our website, DisneyAssembled.com. Click on the Become a patron button membership starts as little as two dollars a month so yeah check it out we'd appreciate your consideration there if that is not your thing no big deal just share the show with your friends tell everybody how much you're enjoying listening to mimi and i each week and uh, if you have an opportunity to do so on your podcast player of choice or if you're watching this episode on our youtube channel we'd really appreciate a kind rating and review or hit the thumbs up and leave us a comment would really appreciate that. It'd be mean the world to us. Mm -hmm. If you are looking for other great Disney content to bring a extra sparkle and magic to your week, you need to check out Magic of the Mouse Radio. Disney Assembled is extraordinarily proud to be part of the Magic of the Mouse Radio family. You can hear the all your favorite awesome Disney music, and you can listen to this show every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday morning at 9 a.m. Eastern. In addition to the Magic of the Mouse radio network, I am so proud and excited to be part of the Magic of the Mouse news network. Magicofthemousenews.com has articles for anything and everything you might want to re read that is Disney related. Make sure to go check it out. Magicofthemousenews.com. Yes. Thank you guys very much. We really appreciate that. So, uh, and yeah, the Magic of the Mouse news, good stuff. You're working on an articles, I'm sure. Your school year's I coming am. in. I am. My school year. Done. So by the time you guys listen to this, it'll be May, Sunday, May 27th, 28th, something like that, I think. And at that point, I will only have two days of high school left, Tuesday and Wednesday, because we have Monday off, um, or tomorrow, if you're listening to this when this episode comes out. And I will finally have time to get back to writing recreationally. So for there some you know. some personal updates... From March to now, I've been slammed with my final creative writing project um, for the department. As a junior, I get to post host a junior showcase, and that's been eating up all of my creative time doing that, um, plus studying for APs and now finals, which I'm exempt from only two major things I have to do, but I do still have some things to do, and then yeah. summer will be here very soon. That's right. College visits and camp and... Yes, All that good stuff, there right? are there are quite a few things going on. I'm getting my license on Thursday. So today actually is Tuesday, May 23rd, 2023. Yeah, we're recording about a week early. We're recording early because this weekend I'm going up to Austin for graduation. Not my graduation, but a graduation. Um, so that'll be really fun. So we have to record in advance. And so we're doing that. And I'm also getting my license on Thursday. Today's Tuesday, so it's two days from now. By the time you listen to this, I'll already have my license. Yes, you I will. won't be driving, though, because I'm not driving myself to Austin, because I will have a license for five minutes and yeah, <laughs> driving you're three not, hours. You're not doing that. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. And then today, okay, this was actually the story that I wanted to share on the show this week. Okay. So, today was, or like the time of recording today, was this like part two of two like college essay like lecture things that we had as juniors. Mm hmm. It was kind of dumb, <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. They didn't say anything that we kind of didn't already know. They gave us some ideas for brainstorming, which were helpful. But the number one piece of advice was, if you're going to write about an experience, pick something that's uncommon, right? Because mm -hmm. why would... Everyone's heard the ACL story. We don't want to hear about the time you tore your ACL. I was like, okay, cool. I've never torn my ACL, so not my problem. 
it made me realize that podcasting is not a normal thing. Like normal, like it is not common. It is not. For high school students to not only have a podcast, but to have been doing it their entire high school career longer than that mm. with their dad. So that's going to make an, two episodes this one. Yeah, I think. yeah. That's going to make an awesome college essay. I hope so. Um, hopefully it'll get scholarship me in, money. Hopefully it will get me into Barnard or Columbia. Let me in, guys. You're the only school in the entire nation that does political science and film. Getting in so is please half let the me battle. In. <laughs> Getting in is half the battle. Paying for it. Paying for it is the other half. Let the me in and give me $100,000. That's where we need more patrons. That's where we need more patrons, right? Patrons, fund my college money. Yeah, yeah. All, I need really, it. Really, it all goes to you. It really, it does. really goes to it you. Does. It helps us offset the cost of the show, but anything that's left over gets what put in your little college What cost of the show? Fund. It's my computer, two microphones. Well, we do spend money from time to time no, yeah, on upgrading equipment, upgrading equipment and we have to spend sure. money on the website. And I mean, so th there's things we do, right? But yeah, we did recently just do, it's sort of like, like a car, like how once a year you have like, you like throughout the year, you've got like minor things you got to fix, but like once a year, you've got like a major project that you've got to like make sure it's done. That's kind of like the show. Like right. throughout the year, we do minor, minor changes minor updates and then once or twice a year right. we'll like i mean the software overhaul. the software we use to edit the show is not free no it's not i mean so it we is do not. have to pay so a license for that. for that so yeah all that good stuff dude so you got a lot going on thanks for sharing but yeah i just wanted to share that because i thought it'd be interesting to share with the people that they could be getting me cool. into usc or northwestern we'll have to wait and see or university of texas at austin Hook you know boards. you know what else is very interesting our main topic of the week is extraordinarily interesting. It is very interesting. I'm you know, ready to share. And last week we counted down our top 10 most fun attractions. Yes. At Walt Disney world in Florida. I love Walt Disney world. And this week we thought we would maybe do another countdown. We were really enthused by the countdown last week. Yeah. What we're getting back week's? into our countdowns instead of our lists. Well, so this is yeah. our countdown of Disney assembled, AKA the Bible, aka the word, the correct, the official, official the official, answer, unofficial, the unofficial official list, list of top 10 attractions with the most immersive storyline. Yeah. So we all know that yes. Disney does a great job of telling stories and all yes. of their rides and attractions in, in some level have a story to them. Right. And they're all good, well told stories. These are just the ones that you get in and you're. Like, boom, I'm in this world. Exactly. I exist in this world. I am not in Orlando. I'm not in Florida. I am not on planet Earth. I am in Disney. Right. I'm in the world of this film. So Mimi and I went yes. through the four theme parks at Walt Disney World in Florida. We did not look at shows. We just looked at ride attractions. And we came up with our list, the official unofficial list. Or is it the, the unofficial the official official. list? It's the unofficial official list of the top 10 most immersive storytelling rides yes. in Walt Disney World in Florida. We, we think you're really going to like this. We're going to do this countdown. Yes. yes, we're going to do that. Um, we're also have a Disney dad joke of the week. But before we get to the dad joke and the main topic of the week, last week on social media, I did put out uh, a question asking people, you know, what Disney park attraction, ride or show did they think was the most fun? And we said we might mention your suggestion in an upcoming episode. Now, we did our countdown in last week's show. Yeah. Go check it out if you haven't. Yeah. If you haven't listened to that yet and you can do it on all your favorite podcast players. And it's also on our YouTube channel, which if you're listening by the to way, this episode, you could probably find the other one. Right. Somehow. And, and by the way, speaking of YouTube, thank you guys so much. We reached our YouTube subscriber goal for the High five. year, right? Boom. Got to that 100 on the way Two to a thousand. Checked. That's right. TikTok. To, boom. YouTube. Boom. That's right. So this there is we Disney go. Disney assembled year. It is. We're, we're, we are, we're making headway. It also helps to actually be posting content regularly. It does. <laughs> so yes, yeah, that, that was a big, so, so we had some responses uh, to that question on Instagram, right? And a couple, I think on Twitter, but here's some from Instagram we got. This one is from uh, someone who follows us. Skitterbug101. Skitterbug101 said, Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout at California Adventure. So Truth. we didn't specify. We didn't specify in the social media post Florida. It could have been California. Skitterbug brought up Guardians Mission Breakout. You've been on that. Truth. That ride is a lot of fun. I think, Tons it, of I fun. think it's it's theming is so cute. It's yeah. so well done. So Skitterbug101, thanks for the response on Instagram. We also we had one, about California you know, who else also. responded on Instagram? It was Andrew. The Canadians. Oh, I love them. Yes. Disney A podcast. They're at Disney A dot podcast 
on Instagram. You should follow them. You should check out their show too. It's a wonderful little podcast. We're yes. big fans. Uh, they wrote either Pirates or Haunted Mansion. So there you go. Pirates or yeah. Haunted Mansion. I think we had Pirates on our list. I think we did have Pirates on yeah, our list. Yeah, so good stuff there. They go to California, don't they? They do. They go to California. I think they've been to Florida too, but they, they do go to California. We love All the right, We had a couple more responses. A couple more responses on Instagram. Um, uh, I think this is T Cara, T C A R A, T Cara, T Cara. Uh, fun, I would have to say, Slinky Dog Dash. Truth. Truth. It's just so harmless and awesome. It, it is. And uh, are those are those my yes? Can I so read this one? You want to read this one? Okay, yes. this one actually came to us on the Twitters. Yes. And Mimi this one likes to comes this from one. the Super Califragilistic Awesome Disney Podcast. One of my favorite Disney podcasts. They're all my favorite, but I do look forward to listening to this one every single week. They do a great job with food stuff. So if you're yes. interested in Disney food stuff, that's what I love about their they, show because they, they talk do about a great food. Job with the and food. Everyone else, we hardly talk about food because we right. don't eat it. Right. <laughs> anyway, right. Super Galvagilist Austin Disney Podcast tweeted us and they said, It's got to be a rise of resistance for me. Flight of Passage is up there, Everest is up there, Tower is up there, but Rise combines elements of walkthrough. Immersion, trackless dark ride, simulation, free fall, all in one experience. So much fun. Hashtag great topic. Yeah. So we they may hear, we they, may, we may have to talk about some of them today. They may have made a list yes, today. They, they didn't make used, our list for most fun, but they used our logic for pirates on Rise. They did. That's crazy. And their handle on Twitter, you should follow them at SFF SCFADP. We're going to try to get at at SCF. ADP. ADP. Yeah, There's too that. many letters. Good stuff. Yeah. No, it's, it's plenty of for letters. For me. <laughs> it's all the letters. So it's, it's you know. Well, it's not all even the letters. A, there's even a vowel and consonant. It's a mixture of those. It's right. actually its own word. They are fantastic. They're, they are they, We have met them through the online world and, and they're really wonderful people. You should check out their podcast as well. All and right. they have fun Southern accents. They, I mean, they're from South Carolina originally. We might so have those to some people who... We, you know, like we, we just, we just might not Depends hear Depends on it. where you listen to us from. We may have yeah. a very Canadians, distinct. Canadians, do we have a Southern accent? Please let know. us know. Thanks. Let us know. All right. Okay. Moving into our actual we list We have a time. main topic of the week. We are 12 again. minutes in. But we also, you know, this has been fun. But you know what else is fun? Yes. <laughs> the Disney dad joke of the week. Are no you ready way. to have it? <laughs> All right, guys. I guess it so. Is, <laughs> it is time for this week's Disney dad joke of the week. Oh, boy. Mimi. Walt what? Disney Imagineers, did you know they are working on a new item that you can buy, like a hat with a special hat band at Disney World? I guess in Disneyland, too. You buy it in a souvenir shop. So they got a special hat band on this hat. And that depending on what area of the park you're thinking about, the hat band, based on what you're thinking, produces the smell from that particular attraction. Okay. Yeah. If you think about it, that really makes a lot of sense. Okay. <laughs> okay. Get it? Yes, it was gotten, it was giggled at. <laughs> if, you, if you think about it, you know, the head, you think about yes, it, it makes sense. if you sense. think about it, it makes Like aromas sense. and smells. All right. Yes. Guys, that's this week's Disney Dad Joke of the Week. Yeah, please free me from this. You send are, in jokes. You, you are more than welcome to send us a suggestion. If we have not used that joke or if it, it, it well, first of all, it has to be appropriate for the show. This is a family show. If it's appropriate for the show and we have not used it before, we would love to consider using another joke. You can send us an email, disneyassembly.gmail.com, or you can send us a direct message, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, all at Disney, Disney assembled. assembled. That's Let's us. Let's jump in now because so these we are, are almost 15 minutes into this. It's episode. all good. We, we're good. We're good. We didn't do Parks News with Mimi this week, so we got some time. Okay. All right. So most immersive. So let me just like clarify what my what my yeah, yeah. share what, what you thought what your criteria was. Criteria. There we go. So I the way I look at it, every single Disney World attraction has a story that is sufficient to have made the list. Right. There's there is no ride attraction in which the story is actually lost on me and I'm just sort of like, you know, being wished whooped around, you know, even in, on kitty rides, like swirling saucers, like there was a story and I see it and I get it and it's cute and whatever. So my criteria really came down to the immersive aspect of it. How, how out of my body, out of my place, 
on this earth do I feel when I'm on this ride? Do I feel like I am sitting in a ride vehicle at Disney World or do I feel like I am actually a so part you're like of transported this into another story. planet, another yes. world, another universe? Yeah, like do I come off of this ride or am I sitting on this ride thinking about only this world, about only this uh, lore, only this canon? Or am I sitting there like, oh my God, when is this going to be over? That is my criteria. Like okay. how, how in, how into it can I get? Right. Um, and a yeah. lot of this is either the queue has something to do with that. The actual yes. ride itself, the cast it's members not just working the ride. it. Yeah. Right. All of the, how well it deals with all the senses involved and everything else. And I would agree with you. I think you're, you captured what I was, um, the spirit of what I was looking for when we put this topic together. So that I think you did a brilliant yeah. job of describing that. For context, we did start, we went through every attract, every ride attraction in the four parks, and we came up with an original list of 20 that right. we thought could possibly make a top 10 list. Right. And then we came up with a list of nine definites. These have to be on our list somewhere. And then we had, we listed everything else went in maybe, we scratched them off one by one, and that's how we got our 10th one. And our 10th one actually... Like we ended up putting the that one from the honorable mentions 10th on the list because it didn't initially make the list. And that one is Remy's Ratatouille Adventure. Absolutely. So Remy's Ratatouille Adventure comes in at number 10 for us. We've both ridden that ride. Yeah. And why don't you tell, you know, the people listening why we included that on our list? Okay, yeah. So what separated this one from all of the other maybes was the fact that you are the rat. When you are in those screens, Linguini is talking to you. You know, like you are the rat in this scenario. You're the size of a rat. You are scurrying around the kitchen. Everything about the sounds, the way you move, um, what's talking to you when, what you're smelling, what you're feeling, what you're, what's touching you, right? Because the tomato juice splats on you and you feel the heat when you're in the oven. And right. um, all of those things put this one ahead of the other maybes and... Um, that's why I think it makes this list. I agree with you. I think this was a wonderfully immersive storytelling attraction. You go, you, you look, you're in the France pavilion, you go around the side, you walk in the building, you're immediately, you start to feel like you're part of like the, the line, the Pause, queue. Putting a pin in you. After 45 minutes of snaking around outside, you enter the building and then. <laughs> well, yeah. And, but when you're in the line, you're like in the walls right. of the building, right? That's why they feel the way they feel. So Look, we only have about two minutes to speak on each of these or we'll be here forever. Right. But I think Remy's very immersive. Yeah. You're in it. You're in the world. You're a small rat. You get out yeah. of the ride. Now you're a regular sized person. Yeah. Even like Great where stuff. you board the queue, like with the big buildings in the background, even when you board your ride vehicle, even when you exit it, like everything is so intentional. The gusto is part of the of the queue line. Right. Very intentional. Very, very clearly. You are the rat. This yeah. is what's going Absolutely. on. Absolutely. So right. Remy's ride at two We thought. Breaks in at top 10 with number 10. Good job. Yes. All right. Moving on to number nine, we're going to go back. To, we're going to leave Epcot. We're going to go over to the Magic Kingdom. We're going to go to Adventureland. We're going to one that I wanted to put on the list that I felt really strongly about, and that is Pirates of the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. Now, I think Pirates tells a story uh, from the moment you get in the boat, you go down, you go through the, the initial part, you go down the waterfall, you have the, it starts with you know, the story begins with the battle and a lot of the story has changed over time. Now it's sort of, you're following the story of Jack Sparrow trying to find the gold and get the gold. Right. Mm -hmm. And the other pirates trying to look for Jack Sparrow and it takes you through different scenes. It's a very definitive storyline with different scenes. You know, there's the auction scene, there's the, the burning of the city scene, there's the jail scene. There's the scene at the end with Jack has got all the, the treasure, right? Very good storytelling. It's, and for a ride that is a classic, that has been around, I mean, Remy's a new ride. For a ride that has been around for as long years. as Longer Pirates than that, has been. actually, because Disneyland. Yeah, I mean, Pirates of the Caribbean is really, really fantastic storytelling for a ride attraction. It holds up, it's lasted the, the test of time. Uh, great immersive storytelling. It had to be on our list. And we right. put it in at number nine. The immersive aspect of it has not died through like without like it's been able to maintain its level of like intensiveness and level of immersiveness despite the fact that it hasn't been like entirely overhauled and redone and i think that that's very impressive sure um what i like about it too also is that like you only get the story if you're really paying attention to what's going on like if you're listening to the other pirates speak 
you hear them looking for Jack. You hear you get you pick up on the story of Jack looking for the um of the gold. And I think that although why well, you shouldn't have to work too hard. Okay. I think besides that, it works really well with the chaos of being a pirate because you have to be able to look through all the other stuff that's going on to to find the treasure. Absolutely. And I like that about yeah. this ride. Great ride, great story. Made the list at number nine. We're going to yes. go on to number eight. We're going to stay in the Magic Kingdom, but we're going to go to another classic Disney attraction. Again, great storytelling. We're going to head over to Liberty Square for this one. We're going to go to the Haunted Mansion. Yes. The Haunted Mansion from the queue line has you hooked. The graveyard is phenomenal. The pre-show is phenomenal. Boarding it is great. Your ghost host is great. But what sets it apart from other dark rides that are immersive in this way is the cast members. The cast members are very much into the Haunted Mansion. And that brings me in. I don't know. Maybe that's just me. It brings me into the world. It does. And if you're wearing your magic band, the little heartbeat starts beating on your magic band when you get down close to getting on your doom buggy. Yeah. Uh, There's 999 ghosts. There's always room for one more. And um, they all have a story to tell. Like if you go through the ballroom scene, every one of those ghosts, if you pay attention, you get a sense of what their story may be. And of course, you get immersed in the story because, you know, the bride is, you know, the the killer bride She's out to get you. So Haunted Mansion. Classic ride, great storytelling, Mm -hmm. again, holds up the test of time, Right, comes in at number eight. And I think the movie coming out with Jamie Lee Curtis is going to solidify the story of it even more, which I think will make it better. Because I think then people will understand Madame Leota and the Constance, Constance? is that her name? Constance, yeah. yeah. The bride, like, I want to know the Haunted Mansion lore. Give me the lore, because then I will be able to appreciate it more. Cool. All right. Moving, Moving on, on to number seven, we're going to leave. Jumping over to Hollywood Studios. Going back to Hollywood Studios, and we're going to get one of We're not more, going back. We're going for the first time. We're going time. for the first time. We're on our list to so Hollywood Studios, a more recent attraction, and that is... Smuggler's Run in so Galaxy's so Edge. So I'm going to say this. Galaxy's Edge itself is a great immersive storytelling experience. Yes, Just walking thing. around the land, kind of like Toy Story Land. It's very immersive. Ugh, I love Toy Story Land. Don't even get Smuggler's me started. Run, though. Look, it's a mixed bag on people who may or may not like this ride. It came in at number seven for us because the fact of the matter is it's got a great pre-show. You know, Hondo, he's looking for pilot. He's looking for a crew. You got to get on the on, on the Falcon. You got to go get, you know, the... Um, uh, what, what's what is it? The stuff that vibranium, the uh, whatever the, it is, the, the Star Wars vibranium, right? Right, whatever it is. The Star Wars. I can't remember the name, but it's a it's a very good story. And you're immer- look, you're on the Falcon. Right. It's a big deal. Oh, yeah, because if even if none of that, even if you don't get any of that, you are flying the Millennium Falcon, and that's what matters. What kills it, what brings it lower, I think, is the fact that if you don't get a good pilot, your screen is just like debris and. The guy is just telling you to fix your ship and you don't really get the right. the story. Um, but I think the pre-show is great. I think the story of you, of everyone having a spot and you flying the Falcon is great. Number seven. Boom. And I think eventually, just like Star Tours, um, there will be other adventures you will do on the Falcon. Like right now, yeah. there's only one 3D story that you're seeing right on the right. screen. So, but yeah, fa- uh, Smuggler's Run Right. Very good in terms of immersive storytelling rides. It's very well done. Yeah. Comes in at number seven. No, yeah. I mean, this ride obviously isn't everyone's favorite. Like, I mean, I skipped it back in March, but right. I think you have to appreciate it's in immersiveness. Absolutely. For sure. All right. Um, we're going to go to yeah, number we're gonna, six. We're, we're going to stay in the Star Wars universe. City. No. Yeah. But we're getting out of Galaxy's Edge and going over to Star Tours. Right. So this is the one that I kind of fought for. Star Tours is story is so clear right from the minute you walk in the door in the queue line star tours it takes tourists around on tours of the galaxy you're gonna get on a transport vehicle and go to your cruise it's perfect it is it is so well set up and someone's a spy and someone's a spy and even c-3po accidentally transporting you is explained like down to the littlest detail this ride has a story period and it has held up it's held up the test of time. This this ride is obviously not everyone's favorite. It can make people sick. And also it does not pale in comparison to the other technologically advanced rides that we have now at this point in time. But Star Tours has such an immense immersive story and I will never, ever skip it. And I stand by that. Yeah, Star Tours. And I believe I heard correctly, they're working on new adventures to be mm-hmm. put in Star Tours. So I would say maybe some of the... Um, 
uh, sequel trilogy locations will find their way on there, well, right? Well, Kylo's and, already in it. I think we're going to see characters like Boba Fett and Oh, that's true. That's true. Maybe Mandalorian. Yeah, yeah, maybe yeah. Maybe Ahsoka, because you do see like a right. little bit of that. Um cool. It's great. Yeah, I, I think Star very immersive, great storytelling. And if your pick is the and, spy, yeah. it's even better. So Star Tours number six. That's number six. Now we're getting ready to jump into the top five. Do we want to recap real quick? Uh, let's, okay. wait. Let's, let's wait. Let's wait. Let's wait. All right. Let's do number five. Number five. Now we're getting into sort of the, the top of the top. Top five. Yes. Of the official, unofficial, the unofficial, official list of the best immersive storytelling rides at Walt Disney World in Florida, according to Disney Assembled. Number five, we're going to leave Hollywood Studios. And head on over to the Animal Kingdom. Yes. Number five is? Everest. So, let me explain. Everest, first of all, my ride, for real. Never skipping this one ever again. Period. Okay. Everest has such a... Okay, first of all, just from the title. Expedition Everest, the legend of the Forbidden Mountain. That alone tells a story that alone tells you exactly what it is you're going to get. You're going to go on an expedition to Everest. Something bad's going to happen. There's a Yeti in the logo. So you can assume there's going to be a Yeti. Boom. That's the story right there. And the queue is fantastic. Once you actually get in the queue and you get past all the gross hot parts and you get inside, there is Himalayan artifacts everywhere, both real and fictional. There is Himalayan history, both real and fictional everywhere. There's a ton of, of Yeti and Bigfoot stuff. And some of it has been fictionalized, but I think a lot of it is like actual, like quote unquote, actual historical, like research that has been done into these creatures. Mm -hmm. Why do you know that, Irene? Well, before your lovely hosts, Mimi and Papa, got into Disney, we were obsessed with this little show on Animal Planet called Finding Bigfoot. (laughs) And it was a team of four. It was Cliff, Bobo, Matt, and Renee. And we would watch Finding Bigfoot every night. I was like in the fourth grade, guys. Like, this is what I did in my free time. I watched Animal Planet. And Cliff, he's a famous Bigfoot researcher and he researches footprints. And he had some of his like, cat, like there was a whole shrine to him in this place, right? Then you get into the, the actual like expedition gear, like box thing, like shed. And then you get on the ride. And then you actually get to see the Yeti and then the track is broken and then this and then that and then the Yeti comes out and it's just perfect. I've talked, I've been talking for so long, but if you haven't ridden this ride, you don't like you can vastly underestimate how good the story actually is. But Everest's story is so clear. It's so good. Number five. I fought for this one. Awesome. Boom. Love it. Gotcha. And I dumped all my Finding Bigfoot knowledge on you. Yeah. Renee actually tweeted Papa back in 2014 when I made a fake Bigfoot foot out of clay. That's how deep into this I was, you guys. <laughs> it was our thing before we did Disney Assemble. We've it always been into thing. Disney, but we were also into that stuff much more. Yeah. Together we just, to spend time together. Yeah. Yeah. Lots of nerd things. Back in the right. heyday. So Everest, abs- great storytelling, great immersive ride. I can't argue with that one. All right. We're leaving Animal Kingdom. We're actually heading back to Disney's Hollywood Studios for number four. And coming in at number four is... The Tower of Terror. The Tower of Terror story is really immersive. I mean, from the moment you walk through, the cast members there, they're kind of creepy bellhops. All of the, you know, the, 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 the decor to make it yeah. look like it's been an abandoned hotel and it's, you know, it's creepy and it, it's, you know, you know that something's going on there and you're actually part of a, you know, you actually feel like you're actually in a twilight zone episode. Yeah. It is an extraordinarily well done story. It like, and again, this is a ride has been around for quite some time. Right. And the story holds up even, you know, in California, because you know, the, the, the wonderful guests who wrote in about gardens, uh, mission breakout. Right. Again, great storytelling, also a great story. very immersive yes. in the same vein of thing, which is a different story. Right. Both of those attractions though, have done a great job of doing stories. But right. yeah, Tower of Terror. Look, it's not it's not a ride for me. I don't do those scary drop ride stuff, but I know enough about it. Mm-hmm. I've seen enough videos about it. I know enough about it from being a Disney fan and a park goer. It is mm-hmm. it, it, it's it, it's a top five in our opinion, story, story, immersive yeah, storytelling sure. attraction. We went back and forth on if tower should be fifth and Everest should be fourth. And you know, as it is now, but what separates tower from Everest is the cast members. Let me tell you guys, like it's the same as haunted mansion. The cast members make it or break it. If your bell hops aren't into being creepy, aren't into being, 
you know, curt and short, it's not going to be as good. But if you have bellhops that are like so into it, so ready to sell you the story of the Tower of Terror, it's just so much better than I could ever imagine. Okay. Absolutely. Anyway, Great hopping stuff. all the way back over to Animal Kingdom. And yeah, we're in the top three now. This is the bronze medal winner. Yes. Bronze medal win- winner all the way back in Animal Kingdom. You probably can assume what it is we're going to say. Flight of Passage. Yeah. So Flight of Passage is technically a very good ride. It is immersive. It is 4D experience. Yes. That's why I think, that's why I fought for it to be as high on the list as it is. Papa initially didn't want to put it as high, but it's 4D. It, you've got the splashes. You've got the sounds. You've got eyes. You've got nose. You've got mouth. You've got ears. You've got feeling. Well, the land helps. First of all, it's kind of like Galaxy's Edge. You walk in, you're in Pandora. The land changes. You are automatically transported into this world. Right. Pandora helps initially, but if Remy's is also 4D. Okay, no. This is a completely different experience than Remy's because you're in these 3D goggles and the banshee underneath you is breathing. And you can and feel you, it breathing, you right? Feel, you feel Pandora in outside of just the effects that it's using. You know, like they they pump a scent into there that just... Mm, and the whole pre-ride delicious. show with you explaining the how they link great. you up and how they right. go through the, the lab the, and you see the, the avatar the in the The pre-show tank. is great. Even if it gets extended too far and it has to run its its B, B line, the pre-show is great. It sets it up perfectly. It's automatically immersive. The queue is phenomenal. It's beautiful. You get to walk through the land. You get to walk through um, the Navi. You get to walk through the special forest where they have the glowy things. You get to see the lab. Like we actually did watch this movie and I still don't know anything about it, but yeah. like, it's, it's so good. It's yeah. so good. It's good stuff. Flight of so, Passage, third. Boom. Absolutely. Bronze medal winner, Flight of Passage. We're now up to the silver medal, number two on our list. And if you've been listening to our show for a while, this one may not surprise you very much. No, we We're do. We're going we to love this leave ride. Animal Kingdom, go back to Hollywood Studios. One more time. One more time to Hollywood Studios. And number two is... Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. We You can really, probably assume. So this last week was number one on our most fun attractions list. Mm-hmm. And we debated whether it should be number one this week in terms of immersive storytelling. Part of it is because, quite frankly, guys, you are in a Mickey and Minnie cartoon. Right. You are literally brought in... To the cartoon to oh, have yeah. the adventure with Mickey and Minnie and all their friends. Like if you're sitting there in that, in the short film, in the pre-show, like I said this last week and nobody's speaking, everyone's paying attention and the train station explodes and up comes the giant hole in the, in the steam. There are little kids, there are people who have never experienced it before that will gasp. Every single time you will get someone who, who is absolutely in awe of what just happened. And then Goofy's like, Come step into our cartoon. And you just, it's just so clear. You're in the lost car and Mickey and Minnie are trying to save you. And it's because Mickey and Minnie are popping up throughout the ride to come save you. And you see it. It's just, it's so clear. And of course, Mickey the other story is Pluto trying to get the, the picnic basket. The picnic basket. Yes. Yes. We love Mickey and Minnie's over here. It won last week in Most Fun. It's almost winning up here in Most Immersive. And it won. Earlier in this like calendar year or earlier in this year about school year, I mean, um, for best dark ride. Do you remember we did our we dark did. ride? Yeah, I think we did do that. Yeah. It beat out Rise the Resistance yes. for best dark ride. So we love making minis over here, but you can't, even if you miss the great movie ride, you hate this ride, you have to admit that it is incredibly immersive. It is. And we love it. And it gets the silver medal, which means... Yeah. Somebody had to get the gold medal and it was not Mickey and Minnie's. But before we give away and tell everyone the first place winner, we do have a couple of honorable mentions. And these are two attractions that really and truly, we we really debated on whether they needed to be in the top 10. And they could have easily have made it into the top 10. This would put Remy's over. Right. And this would put, or maybe even Pirates and Haunted Mansion. They could have challenged them as well. I mean, they could have fit anywhere between eight and 10. They didn't quite make it as we talked about it. Uh, Mimi, do you want to share with everybody what the two honorable mentions we have? Yeah, I'll just share them and then quickly why we almost picked them. So Slinky Dog Dash um, was the first one because Slinky Dog Dash is a ride around Andy's backyard. You're a toy. You're riding on this uh, roller coaster that Andy made and you can see it in the queue and it's very cute. The problem with it that kept it off the list, um, the actual theming throughout the actual like coaster part doesn't necessarily lend itself to you knowing like what's going on if you weren't paying attention in the queue. 
And the cast members aren't always the most immersive for this experience. Okay. Next, we had the Jungle Cruise. Um, very immersive. Obviously, the cast members are very immersive. The cast this, members yes. are extremely immersive. We love the Jungle Cruise so much, and the story is definitely there. The story is so, so, so clear. My problem with the Jungle Cruise is that sometimes the cast members, the skippers, will make jokes about the outside world that makes the Jungle Cruise seem like it is aware that it is a ride attraction instead of like its own independent world. Right. Does that make sense? I hope you guys know what I'm saying. And so right. that that took me out of the immersiveness a little bit in my experience. Like it, they're just very obvious that they are here working their job, running this ride over and over again. We're still in Disney World, but this right. is what this is. But both of them very easily on could any have, other day yeah. of the week, if we were talking about this, they could have made the top 10. Like we were really that close to adding them in the top 10. So we figured sure. they would be our two. I'll mention, of course, there are other attractions. We're not going to list them all um, that were in our top 20 that we came up with. But we thought Slinky Dog and Jungle Cruise, because they were so close to being included on this list, deserved an honorable mention. Yes. All right. That takes us to number one. And it may not come as a shock. To people who are listening who've been keeping probably up. Probably will not at all. But the number one most immersive storytelling ride in Walt Disney World, according to Disney's assembled unofficial official list of those top 10 items, is Rise of the Resistance. Yeah. So we're going wow, back. No shocker there. Yeah, we're staying in Hollywood Studios. We're gonna go to Rise of Resistance. Listen, it is the most immersive, comprehensive, multi-layered storytelling attraction i think in the world right i I, I, mm-hmm. I believe that it is a when it is operating at its full capacity and, and it's not having any technical problems it is a absolutely wondrous immersive experience of course if it's broken down and they're doing the, the b show and maybe skipping parts of the attraction right. to get you through it will not be nearly as immersive. Uh, no, I think uh, unless if unless you skip the pre-show like we ended up doing at the end of our trip in March, it's probably going to be the same ride. Right. We, 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 we did. It's probably going to be just right, as immersive. They skip through the part where you get on the transport and get tractor beamed into the Star Cruiser or into the yeah. Star Boy. They skip that part. That part is essential to the story because that's where you're recruited. That's how you you're figure new, out like right, where you are and, and what you're so doing. On. So, yeah. But if it's all we're we're doing this list as if they were all operating the way they're supposed to operate. Because even Mickey and Minnie's has a B show that it doesn't always play. Sure. Um, My my thing with Rise is. You need the pre shows for it to make sense. It's phenomenal. It, It really is. It's not my favorite attraction, which is probably a hot take, but it really is such a marvel. Of technology, of storytelling, of planning and acting and the cast members are all into it. Everybody, everybody there, every single word, every single set piece, every single prop, every single movement has a purpose is very intentional. And as a writer, we are taught, um, to use words very carefully and that every single word has meaning. And if you're not, if you're saying something that doesn't have any meaning to just not even do it and that this ride does that beyond what is expected of it. And I think it's phenomenal. Absolutely. And we should also point out every star Wars attraction in the park made our top 10 list of most emotive storytelling rides, Mm -hmm. which speaks volumes to what they did at galaxy's edge. And also we've had five of the 10 are located in Disney's Hollywood studios park. Hollywood studios is literally on its like up, up line right now. Like, we I've said been after our this. last visit, it has climbed the list. It is a hard, it is, it is battling hard for our best and most favorite. No. Part. Yeah. Cause like, it's like better attractions, better food, better attractions, better food, better att- like Epcot's got that food, but like Hollywood Studios has literally everything else. Like, and of course mm, the magic kingdom's got all the, the magic and the nostalgia. Mm, and the magic it, kingdom is definitely not my favorite park, but that's okay. Oh, there's another hot take. It's not a hot take. Anyone who lives in Florida knows that Hollywood's that Magic Kingdom is not the best park. (laughs) Okay, I I, want to stay that debate for another day. I I love the Magic Kingdom. It's so busy all of the time. It is very busy. It's so busy all the time, and there is nowhere to just be in Magic Kingdom. Yeah, well, there are places to be in literally every other park. Well, listen. The official, unofficial list, the countdown for most immersive storytelling rides has been done. Mimi, why don't you recap for everyone our top 
10. Yes. So at number 10, we've got Remy's Ratatouille Adventure in Epcot. At number nine, we've got Pirates of the Caribbean in Magic Kingdom. Staying in Magic Kingdom for number eight, we've got Haunted Mansion. Number seven, we've got Smuggler's Run. Number six, we've got Star Tours. Both are in Hollywood Studios. Number five, we've got Everest in Animal Kingdom. Number four, we've got Tower of Terror back in Hollywood Studios. Number three, we've got Flight of Passage again in Animal Kingdom. Number two is Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. And number one, Rise of the Resistance in both in Hollywood Studios. Our yeah, honorable yeah. mentions were Slinky Dog Dash and Jungle Cruise. And we should point out Slinky Dog Dash, Hollywood, Hollywood Studios. Hollywood Studios, so, Studios. Hollywood so, Studios yeah. is so good, you guys. Please yeah. don't ever skip Hollywood Studios. If you talk bad about it, I will probably cry. I love Hollywood <laughs> Studios so much. All right. Well, there we go. That's this was list. really lots of fun. That is, this is the list yes. for most immersive Walt Disney World rides. Go do them right now. Absolutely. Um, there is a wait time of like 20 minutes at Big Thunder Mountain Railroad right now. So if you guys run, <laughs> you can probably make it. Well, no, but they have to run back in time because we're recording this like almost it's a week before fine. it comes out. Okay. It's fine. It'll probably be the same. But anyway. All right. Good job this week. High five. High five. All right. We're going Boom. a little, we'll go a little longer than usual, but it's okay. We had a fun time. All right. Mimi. Our friends who are listening, they may have opinions. How can they possibly let us know what they think? So you guys can send us a message on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, all at Disney Assembled. Or you guys can send us an email, disneyassembled at gmail.com. But if you guys want to support the show further, the link to our Tee Public, Patreon, buy us a Dole Whip, all that stuff is on our website, disneyassembled.com. Make sure to go check it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Patreon, especially, you know, college. But uh, <laughs> YouTube channel. We have a YouTube channel. We've we've reached the 100 subscriber goal. And I know if you're a new YouTube watcher, that may not seem like a big deal, but it is a big deal to us. We've worked hard to put more content on our YouTube channel. We're really proud of that. If you have not subscribed yet to the YouTube channel, please consider doing so. We would love to have you join us there because we put different content on YouTube, right? It's yeah. not just the show. We put other things on YouTube and our TikTok too. Much of what we do on TikTok is just extra fun Disney stuff. Disney stuff. Right. It's just Disney related stuff Disney that we just stuff. have fun with. So check us out on all those things. We'd really appreciate it. All right. One more high five. Wait, wait, one more high five. Good job. Boom. We Guys, thanks episode. for listening. We, we really, really appreciate it. Thank we you do. so much. We hope that this show brought a smile to your face, some extra magic to your day and that little extra pixie Jesus. dust also for your week. Thanks for listening again, guys. And until next time, see you real soon. Ladies and gentlemen, please collect your belongings, watch your head and step, and take small children by the hand.